Today I am going to be discussing in depth the different ways that visual rhetoric is seen through the movie Anastasia produced by Disney. The first strategy of visual rhetoric that I'm going to be looking at is narrative fidelity. This is the credibility that the audience finds within the narrative. This could be the reasoning that characters have and if their actions are following what we expect the characters to do as we see them. So one of the biggest ways that we can see narrative fidelity through Anastasia is with character development. Now, when we look at Anastasia specifically, we can see at the very beginning of the movie a uh, portrayal of the attitude and personality that she has. Now, after she loses her memory, this personality doesn't change. She may not know who she is, but she still has the same personality that we expect her to have after viewing the, the beginning of the movie. And her actions, we can see, do not differ from what we would expect her to do, having these characteristics and personality traits. Secondly, I want to look at Dimitri. His character is shown as the love interest. So as the audience, when we see Dimitri taking action to protect Anastasia, that is something we would expect of his character because we, as the audience, understand the reasoning behind his actions. And this also goes for the villain of the movie, Rasputin. We know that he does not like Anastasia or, the fam or her family and wants to kill all of them. So his actions of trying to destroy her life and um, the people that she is with are something that we as the audience understand and expect from him. And this keeps the narrative fidelity of the story flowing correctly as the movie continues. Next, I'm going to be looking at narrative coherence. This looks at the flow and credibility of the plot overall. So this is the structure of the story itself and how much credibility the audience can find as the story progresses, looking at the actions of the characters in relation to the overall plot of the story. Now, the first person I'd like to talk about in this specific um, example is Dimitri. Now we see him at the beginning trying to get money through a scam and this is not something that we as the audience uh, don't understand. We can see that this is something that he thinks he needs to do to be able to get money to get by. But we can see his actions change in response to the plot. As he falls in love with Anastasia, his actions change from being willing to do the scam to wanting to help her. And this is something that we find credibility in because it continues to support the plot of the movie without going against the actual uh, character and what we expect from him. We can also see this in Anastasia. Now, I said before that she still had the same personality after losing her memory. This is true. However, we can see that she has less confidence in herself after leaving the orphanage and we can see that confidence grow as the story progresses. This is also something that we as the audience are expecting. Because she is the main character, she has the most character development, and her actions and confidence level continue to match that as the story goes on, making the credibility of the overall plot something that we as the audience are more likely to believe. This can also be seen with the Grand Duchess. We see that she is trying to find her granddaughter, and this is something that we as the audience can understand, that she is looking for someone that she loves and is going to the ends of the earth to do it. Now, we can also see that later in the movie when she decides that she can't try and find Anastasia anymore because it's causing her too much pain, this is something that we as the audience can also understand without it ruining the credibility of the overall plot and narrative of the story. So the actions that the characters are taking are not only something that is reasonable for their character to do, but it's something that continues to reinforce the plot and overall story of the movie. This makes it more credible for the audience to watch. The next strategy of visual rhetoric that I'm going to be looking at is gaze. And this is the presented image that we are given in relation to what we as the audience are expecting. We can see this in the various character designs of the characters in Anastasia. When we look at Anastasia specifically, we can see her outfit design changing as her character progresses. 
In the beginning of the movie, she is wearing what we would expect her as a princess to wear, and later in the movie, when we see her as an orphan, she is wearing the clothes that we would expect a commoner to wear in this movie, and it matches what those around her are wearing. Now, we can see the uh, progression of her outfits as her character continues to grow and develop. We see that her outfits become more fashionable and eventually fit in with what we as the audience are expecting of royalty. Now when we look at Dimitri, his outfits um, don't change as much. He is not overly formal, but he does have uh, an outfit that is more fashionable and professional than what some of the other characters are wearing. But when we look at the others around him that are in similar positions, this is not something that is out of the ordinary. As we can see, the other characters in the movie also wear similar outfits when they are of similar social standing. When we look at Rasputin, we can see the gaze definitely is shifted to that of what we as the audience are expecting of a villain, especially a Disney villain. While many of the other characters have more rounded features, Rasputin's design has a lot more sharp edges. His nails are very long and sharp, his character has a spiky beard, his clothing is ragged and dark, and his character design overall is what we as the audience are expecting when we think of something against the established normal of the regular characters in the movie. So when we see him, it is immediately apparent to us that he is the villain because his character design represents what we as the audience are expecting. The last thing that I would like to discuss today is the intertextual context that we can see within the movie of Anastasia. Now, this is going to be looking at the different pieces of media that we can see influencing the actual movie. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the fact that Anastasia was a real person. The rumors surrounding her survival were something that were perpetuated for a very long time. So the song that the town sings at the beginning of the movie about the rumors that Anastasia might be alive are based on actual rumors of people thinking that she was alive. This was because the bodies found were not connected to her in any way. So there was a rumor that because the amount of bodies found was less than the actual number of people that had escaped, that she could still be alive. Now, later, DNA testing proved that these four bodies that were found were not Anastasia, but in 2007, the two missing bodies of the Romanov family were found, and one of the bodies has been linked to Anastasia. So we can see the context of the rumors around her being real from rumors that actually happened and were perpetuated at one time. Now the second thing I'd like to talk about is something that I'm sure a lot of people have heard about or noticed, and that is the lime green color. If you look at other movies, you can see that many Disney villains have scenes where during their song, the color lime green is used as the lighting and background color. And so when we see this around Rasputin, it's something that we can connect to him being a Disney villain because of the color lime green being perpetuated throughout many other Disney villains and their specific scenes.